How to Promote Deeper Learning with the Four Shifts, Episode 497. The 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. Today, we're talking with Julie Graber. I have to give a hat to my friend, Scott McLeod, who is her co-author of Harnessing Technology for Deeper Learning, a quick guide to education, technology, integration, and digital learning spaces. So, Julie, you know, I guess the thing with EdTech, since, you know, I've been blogging and teaching for a while now, is that people get so excited about the bright and shiny and forget about really using it to help learning. How do you help frame this whole deeper learning with technology approach? Well, one of the things that Scott and I decided to do because we struggled with some of the protocols that were out there, frameworks, I should say, and we really didn't see anything that we thought were helping schools do just that, kind of move away from the bright and shiny. And so what we decided to do is come up with our own. So we really researched, um, spent a lot of time with a lot of different frameworks out there, teaching, learning, or tech, or combination. And we came up with this protocol called the Forge shifts. And it is centered around four different shifts, uh, deeper thinking and learning, authentic work, student agency and personalization, and technology infusion. So these four shifts and the protocol in your book, you actually relate different technologies to these shifts, right? Yeah. What we try to do is provide a context around maybe a particular activity or lesson that teachers maybe have typically done. And what we do is then figure out ways in which some of those shifts and components underneath the shifts really help lift that activity or lesson and reach for that deeper thinking, deeper learning, authenticity. And then as we do that, we think of ways in which that technology is integrated very, very nicely and in a way that makes sense and that the learning is not sacrificed. So you get the tech and the learning. Well, we definitely need that. And I'm curious, you know, there's so many different protocols or methodologies. And of course, the SAMR model has been used by a lot of folks. How would you contrast your approach with that? Is it the four shifts or the SAMR? Or do you think the four shifts are kind of a way to guide you to the redefinition that needs to happen? That's a great question. You know, we've had that question posed to us quite a bit. And we have kind of landed on that SAMR is sort of a technology usage continuum, not a learning continuum. And so we think that the technology paired with the learning and we focus on learning. So we are um, kind of catchphrase is technology for the purpose of what? So instead of starting with the technology, think about what is your purpose? And obviously that should be connected into learning, whatever that is. And then we think about what technologies pair nicely with that particular function of learning. So it really starts with what we want to do in terms of teaching and learning. Yes, absolutely. Well, as it as it should, because, you know, the bright and shiny approach looks nice for what, two months and then you wonder why it has dust on it. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're seeing. I mean, in Iowa, where Scott and I have spent a lot of time with schools trying to get our schools a lot of access and we have a lot of access in our schools one to one even with access we were still finding you know those replicative kind of technologies used to support pedagogy that didn't necessarily change so we thought we had to do something to help lift that and so we've seen some progress in some of the schools that we've worked with. So you've redesigned quite a few lessons in the book. Give me an example of a lesson that you redesigned with this framework and what it was before and what it became with a redesign. I would say I would like to go with our Skype, Mystery Skype one. That is a popular one. And we usually start in any kind of technology uh, workshop or session. We like to use that one because we know that it's kind of popular with teachers. And so typically what we see with Mystery Skype is, you know, it's two classrooms trying to communicate and collaborate across, you know, whether it's states or different countries. And so while we think that's a great idea, oftentimes the kids have different roles and that's good as well. The part that sometimes where what we've seen, and obviously we haven't seen all examples of Mr. Skype, but what we've typically seen 
one classroom, you know, asking yes or no questions to another classroom about maybe if they have a, a hockey team or do they have a saint in their name, things like that. And so what we have found is we really haven't sometimes seen the actual learning. Like we can't really tell, is it social studies? Is it a language arts class? What is it? And so what we were wondering as we think about our redesign is really kind of thinking about the five themes of geography and maybe one of the themes could be around region. And so could students spend time thinking about questions that they could guess another school's region based off of the clues they give. And when you think about region, it could be questions around language. It could be around religion. It could be around vegetation. It could be lots of different things. And then the kids could take turns and based off of those clues, they could then think about answering that question. But then also we were thinking maybe instead of just sort of a one and done, could those classrooms continually connect more than just that one time? Could they connect around other particular themes of geography? Or could there be an opportunity to be pen pals? Could it be broader than just that one time or event? And so those are some thoughts that we have. And when we've done this redesign with some active participants, when we've had some learning opportunities with people face to face, they're like, yeah. And so we don't want to say that they can't have the opportunity to connect with other schools or the the roles that students have, like keep all of that. But how can we lift the learning? And could we lift the learning when we think about social studies around the five themes of geography, because it's more conceptual and it's going to get at some deeper learning. So as we finish up, um, I'm curious. So you have your four shifts protocol that, that you've discussed. When you effectively design a lesson, should you have all four or can you have one in one lesson in one in another? How do you guide educators? Because, you know, sometimes people can go over the top and you have this beautiful 10 page document about what your lesson is going to be. And it's completely impractical. Absolutely. So we give some tips and suggestions in our book, but what we think is no, not all four, that's too much. Like, is it possible throughout the year that a teacher, if they have time dedicated and support, you know, from leadership that they could get all of these at some point throughout their lessons and units throughout the year, again, with that support. But we think that it kind of depends on the teacher and it also depends on what the school has going on. I personally like to look at the deeper thinking and learning shift first, because I think if you focus in on sort of that conceptual learning, as I mentioned before, a lot of the other components within the shifts fall into place. So I would not say all four, maybe pick maybe a few. And my opinion is maybe you take a look first at the domain knowledge underneath the deeper thinking and learning shift, because I think if you get that solidified, a lot of other pieces tend to come along. Awesome. So the four shifts protocol is one deeper thinking and learning two authentic work, three student agency and personalized learning and four technology infusion and putting all those together to harness technology for deeper learning, which is the name of the book by Julie Graber and Scott McLeod. So Julie, thank you for this insight. And I think that it just gives us a lot to think about in terms of, yes, we want technology, but technology should take us somewhere. It should transport us to a better learning experience and not necessarily just use it for technology's sake. Thanks, Julie. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you for listening to the 10-Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.